Welcome and thank you for joining us. You are watching Millennium News Hour and I am Tanziba Nauri. Today we have brought up and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines. Biden apologized for harmful boarding school policy impacting Native American families. Harris and Trump each secure 47% in final pre-election poll. Harris focused on Trump as dangerous in final campaign push. Harris hosts rally with Obama and Springsteen to energize voters. Trump targets Asian American voters at Las Vegas rally. Governor Hochul unveils a major funding for aging Livingston Avenue rail bridge. Rapper Lil Durk faces federal charges in 2022 shooting incident. King Charles addresses Commonwealth leaders amid calls for slavery reparations. Tropical storm Trami causes devastation and leaves 66 dead in the Philippines. Putin emphasizes U.S. role in shaping post-election relations. Donna White seeks Zuckerberg's help to revamp UFC rankings. And former Brazil defender Zé Carlos passes away at 56. You were listening to headlines, now news in detail. President Joe Biden delivered a formal apology for the U.S. policy that forcibly separated generations of indigenous children from their families for over 150 years. This policy resulted in their placement in federally supported boarding schools aimed at forced assimilation. I formally apologize as President of the United States of America for what we did, Biden stated. The apology followed a long investigation led by Interior Secretary Deb Holland, who revealed that at least 973 Native American children died in these schools, with the real number likely much higher. Biden acknowledged the pain caused by the federal Indian boarding school policy, calling it a mark of shame in American history. The investigation identified 417 institutions across 37 states where many children suffered physical sexual and emotional abuse. While some welcomed Biden's apology, others like Alex White Tomb expressed skepticism, saying an apology doesn't change anything. They called for meaningful actions, including support for communities and investigations into historical injustices. As the nation reflects on these painful memories, the path forward remains a topic of discussion. The race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump remained tied, as shown in a recent CNN poll conducted October 20-23 by SSRS. Both candidates had support from 47% of likely voters, revealing a closely divided nation. In September, Harris held a narrow 48% to 47% lead 
reflecting the campaign's ongoing stability. As of October 23rd, nearly 20% of voters had already cast their ballots, with early votes favoring Harry's 61% to 36%. Yet among those who hadn't voted, Trump led 50% to 44%. Most voters appeared firm in their choices, with only 2% undecided and another 9% open to changing. Poll data indicated that the voters trusted Trump more on economic and immigration issues, while Harris held an edge on abortion rights and protecting democracy. Trump led among men, white voters, and rural areas, while Harris led with women, younger voters, and voters of color. Both parties retained strong support from their bases, with each candidate pulling over 90% from their respective sides. Vice President Kamala Harris centered her final campaign strategy on portraying former President Donald Trump as a danger. With election day approaching, her campaign aimed to win over undecided voters and energize her base. Harris's advisors indicated that while attacking Trump would be a key part of her message, she would also share her vision for the country. Recently, she labeled Trump a fascist and emphasized the need for voters to understand the consequences of a second Trump presidency. Harris planned to deliver a major speech at the Ellipse, the site of Trump's remarks before the January 6 Capitol riot, to reinforce her message. Some Democrats expressed concern that she focused too much on Trump and not enough on her own qualifications. Despite this, Harris remained committed to highlighting her goals, such as cutting taxes, for millions and protecting social security. As she campaigns, her team believes that reminding voters of Trump's threat to democracy and offering her vision will resonate with undecided voters and motivate her supporters. Harris's closing argument was designed to contrast her leadership with Trump's past actions. Vice President Kamala Harris held a star started rally in Georgia featuring former President Barack Obama and rock legend Bruce Springsteen. This event aimed to rally support ahead of the upcoming election on November 5. Harris brought in high-profile figures to strengthen her campaign against rival Donald Trump. Springsteen criticized Trump, calling him an American tyrant, while Obama questioned Trump's leadership abilities and condemned his desire for power. Harris focused on her middle-class background, promising to tackle inflation and improve the cost of living. She addressed her predominantly black audience, highlighting their crucial role in her campaign. As early voting began, with about 2.2 million ballots already cast in Georgia, Harris aimed to boost turnout. Meanwhile, Trump held rallies in Arizona and Nevada, making controversial remarks about immigration. He also claimed he would fire the special prosecutor investigating him if elected. Harris's campaign was further energized by plans for a Houston event featuring Beyonce, who, who has become associated with Harris's message on abortion rights. Harris, aiming to be the first female president, sought to inspire voters through her stir started rally. We'll be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around the various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on millennium news 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at tv such as sony samsung lg roku tv amazon tv and apple tv and also in all european countries and australia available with the sky network worldwide jago tv radiant ip tv worldwide jago bd network and horizon satellite globally stay connected with millennium news hour to get the world news on your face welcome back to millennium news hour 
Former President Donald Trump held his first campaign rally aimed at the Asian American and Pacific Islander community in Las Vegas. The event, titled Unite for Change, was organized by the conservative PAC Turning Point USA and featured speeches from former Hawaii Representative Chelsea Gabbard and ex-presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Trump spoke about boosting the economy, public safety and immigration, stating he aims to win support from the AAPI community, which now makes up 12% of Nevada's electorate. He noted, under the Trump administration, we will build an economy that lifts up all Americans. Trump also referred to COVID-19 as the China virus, a term criticized for contributing to anti-Asian sentiment during the pandemic. He praised the Filipino community's vibrant culture, saying, you are hard-working people and we are going to take care of you. Throughout his hour-long speech, Trump reiterated his campaign promises to cut taxes, deport undocumented immigrants, and improve public safety. He criticized Vice President Kamala Harris, claiming she would be detrimental to Americans' interests. Governor Katie Hoku announced a federal grant of $215.1 million to support the replacement of the Livingston Avenue Rail Bridge, which spans the Hudson River between Albany and Rensselaer. This funding, part of the Federal Railroad Administration's program, aims to replace the outdated Civil War era bridge with a modern structure that will enhance rail service for passengers and freight. Governor Hoku emphasized the importance of teamwork in revitalizing infrastructure and thanked federal partners for their support. The replacement project is a key initiative under her administration, aiming to reconnect communities and promote economic growth. The total cost of the project is $634.8 million, with additional funding from New York's five-year capital plan. Site preparation has already begun and major construction is expected to start in early 2025. The new bridge will feature seven spans and meet modern standards for load and speed, allowing for increased freight capacity and accommodating marine traffic on the Hudson River. The current bridge will remain in use until the new one is completed, anticipated in 2028, minimizing disruptions during the transition. Rapper Lil Durk faced arrest in Florida on federal charges related to a murder-for-hire plot connected to the 2022 attempted killing of rapper Quando Rondo. The incident, which occurred on August 19, 2022, resulted in the death of Rondo's cousin, Savias Robinson, 24 years old. Dirk was charged with conspiracy to commit murder-for-hire and five other members of his rap group, only the family, were also arrested. Reports indicated that Turk attempted to flee the country when the FBI caught him in South Florida on Thursday night. According to FBI agent Sarah Kirkerin, the violence was linked to a feud stemming from the 2020 death of OTF rapper King Vaughn. Turk allegedly offered a bounty for Rondo, whose real name is Taekyun Bowman. Court documents revealed that on the day of the shooting, Turk's associates traveled from Chicago to Los Angeles with plans with plans to ambush Rondo. They tragically killed Robinson instead. Dirk was later arrested in Miami while trying to board a flight to Italy. He and his co-defendants are being held pending transfer to Los Angeles. Now it's time for global update. King Charles acknowledged the painful aspects of Britain's history during the Commonwealth Leaders' Summit in Samoa, which he attended for the first time as king. While he highlighted the need to learn from the past, he avoided directly addressing the growing calls for reparations for slavery. Leaders from 56 Commonwealth nations expressed hopes for an apology and discussions on reparatory justice, but Charles emphasized understanding history to guide future actions. The Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Philip Davis, stated that open dialogue about historical wrongs was essential. He described reparatory justice as a vital but challenging conversation, reflecting on the deep scars slavery left on communities. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer hinted at supporting 
non-financial reparations like restructuring financial systems but ruled out direct payments. Outgoing Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland also acknowledged colonial legacies. Joshua Setipa from Lesotho suggested reparations could involve climate financing as part of a broader solution. Charles concluded his speech by honoring Queen Elizabeth's dedication to the Commonwealth and urging collective action to combat inequalities and support human rights. We'll be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around the various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment here we come millennium news hour to get you connected with top usa and international trending news which includes local news political news world news business news health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. You are watching latest global updates. Tropical storm Trami caused severe destruction in the northern Philippines, leaving 66 people dead as the residents began to clear their homes of mud and debris on Friday. Thousands were displaced after the storm brought two months worth of rain in just two days, leading to widespread flooding. Many people remained trapped on their roofs, desperately asking for help. President Ferdinand Marcos highlighted that accessibility was a significant challenge for rescuers in the Bicol region where saturated ground resulted in unexpected landslides. In Laurel, a town near Lake Tall, residents witnessed devastating flash floods that swept away vehicles and household items. As Trami moved westward over the South China Sea, the death toll continued to rise. Batangas province reported at least 34 confirmed deaths, while the vehicle region accounted for 28 fatalities. Rescue teams used boats to reach those stranded, and social media posts helped connect them with people in need. Government offices and schools across Luzon remained closed on Friday, with the storm surge warnings still in effect. Experts warned that climate change is causing storms in the region to intensify and linger longer over land. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced on Thursday that the future of U.S.-Russia relations would depend on Washington's attitude after the upcoming presidential election. He welcomed comments from Donald Trump expressing a desire to end the Ukraine conflict, calling them sincere. However, Putin warned that it was an illusion to believe Russia could be defeated on the battlefield and emphasized that any peace deal must recognize Russia's control over parts of Ukraine. At the BRICS summit in Kazan, Putin stated, if the U.S. is open, we will also be open. If not, that's fine. He highlighted that the relationship between the two countries had de deteriorated to its lowest point since the Cold War. Putin also said he was willing to consider peace proposals, but insisted they must reflect the realities on the ground. He criticized Western leaders for hoping to strategically defeat Russia, asserting that such beliefs only demonstrated ignorance of the country's history. Meanwhile, discussions with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres included calls for peace and stability amid ongoing conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Dana White, the UFC president, reached out to Mark Zuckerberg for assistance in fixing the UFC rankings system, potentially using artificial intelligence. During an interview with TNT Sports on Thursday, White confirmed his discussions with the Meta CEO, stating 
We literally had meetings this week to work on it. White expressed his frustration with the current ranking system, which has been in place since 2013 and relies on votes from a UFC-selected group of media. He stated, I just can't handle incompetence. It's driving me crazy. I can let people that I don't believe know what they are talking about deal with the rankings anymore. Recent issues with the rankings have sparked complaints from fans and fighters such as Max Holloway being ranked below Justin Gaethje and Renato Moicano's unchanged position despite his recent victory. White emphasized his commitment to making significant changes, stating, I'm totally going to fix the ranking. We are going to make a lot of strong moves here coming into 2025. Former Brazil fullback Z. Carlos died on Friday at the age of 56 as announced by his old club, Sao Paulo FC. The cause of death was not specified, but local media reported it was due to cardiac arrest. The club expressed its sorrow, stating it is with great sorrow that Sao Paulo FC announces the death of Jose Carlos de Almeida Z. Carlos this Friday in Osos Ososco near Sao Paulo. Z. Carlos who played for Sao Paulo from 1997 to 1999, was called up as a replacement for Flavio Conceco for the 1998 World Cup. Although he was unkept at the time, he served as an unused substitute during the group stage at knockout matches against Chile and Denmark. His only international appearance occurred when Tofu was suspended for the semi-final against the Netherlands, which Brazil won on penalties. He returned to the bench for the final where Brazil lost 3-0 to France and was never selected to play for the national team again. J. Carlos retired from football in 2005, leaving behind a legacy as a dedicated player. We'll be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally stay connected with millennium news hour to get the world news on your face welcome back to millennium news hour now it's time for business news today's new york stock close price is 19560.73 the NYC composite is decreased by 33.51 points or 0.17%. Tokyo stock close price is 37,913.92. The Nikkei 225 index is decreased by 229.37 points or 0.60%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,299.70. The Shanghai index is increased by 19.44 points or 0.59%. Hong Kong stock close price is 20,590.15. The Hang Seng Index is increased by 100.53 points or 0.49%. 
Bombay stock close price is 79,402.29. The Sensex index is decreased by 662.87 points or 0.83%. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast. Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. Biden apologized for harmful boarding school policy impacting Native American families. Harris and Trump each secure 47% in final pre-election poll. Harris focused on Trump as dangerous in final campaign push.
Harris hosts rally with Obama and Springsteen to energize voters. Trump targets Asian American voters at Las Vegas rally. Governor Hochul unveils a major funding for aging Livingston Avenue rail bridge. Rapper Lil Durk faces federal charges in 2022 shooting incident. King Charles addresses Commonwealth leaders amid calls for slavery reparations. Tropical storm Trami causes devastation and leaves 66 dead in the Philippines. Putin emphasizes U.S. role in shaping post-election relations. Donna White seeks Zuckerberg's help to revamp UFC rankings. And former Brazil defender Zé Carlos passes away at 56. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel, and visit our websites. Our website addresses are www.millenniumnews24.com and www.millenniumtv24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all the TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.